Hey guys, I'm Lucas and this is a tutorial about how to reach orbit in KSP in a somewhat simple way. This video is not entirely dedicated to beginners, but I think many of you will already have heard about much of it. I'll try to mention some maybe new things on the way, but you can in the worst case still enjoy the animations. The main reason for this video is it got a lot more difficult to reach orbit in KSP since the 1.0 update due to the new aerodynamics. I just think I need a video I can throw at people who struggle with it. So there are aerodynamics about air or gases in motion and the lesser known aerostatics about not moving gases. Latter is for example used to explain why balloons fly. Since the aerodynamics overhaul rockets behave more realistically in the atmosphere which makes it more difficult to launch rockets especially if you don't adapt to it. Now what do I mean with that? Let me first start building a very basic rocket out of the most basic parts. For that I enable the advanced mode in the editor to the left and filter my parts by tech level. I will only use tier 1, 2 and 3 parts for this rocket. First comes the capsule or the command port with a parachute on top. As you can see our parachute can be staged, thus is shown in the staging menu on the right. Pressing the spacebar enables one stage after the other during flight. The next part is a heat shield which will protect Jabediah during re-entry. Assigning Jab to do the mission can be done over he- oh I forgot he's on vacation. I think Valentina will do it equally good. Now before I go on, I click this little wrench down at the bottom which shows me some important stats about my current rocket. What I'm mostly looking for is the mass because the lighter it is, the easier it flies. One could think we cannot do anything about it at this point but right clicking the heat shield for example allows us to decrease the ablator. The ablator or ablative material protects the capsule during re-entry by absorbing the heat and burning away. I'm very familiar with how much I need on my mission so I decrease it to 40 which saves roughly 0.1 tons. Clicking on the pod I can also get rid of the monopropellant which I don't need at this point. It doesn't sound much but if this was my complete payload I have just saved more than 10% which can be a big deal especially with those low tier parts. Next up is the decoupler which decouples the pod from the rocket below. It can be mounted in two ways and I usually do it like so because it looks better to me. The first stage now consists of a lot of fuel tanks because we only have the little ones. I basically grab as much as my engine can carry. Speaking of it, how much does it carry? Well, I'm glad that you've asked. I want to go with a swivel engine because it can move its nozzle and steer the rocket with it. Right clicking the engine in the part list reveals its thrust of 168 kN at sea level and 200 kN in vacuum. It might be a little confusing but the thrust of a rocket engine depends on the difference between the inside and the outside pressure of the combustion chamber where the fuels ignite. The bigger the difference the higher the thrust. So as we fly upwards the outside pressure decreases in the atmosphere which leads to more power. Anyways I'm only interested into the thrust at sea level of 168 kN. I now simply divide the number by 10 which would be 16.8 and that is the amount my engine can push in tons. At least that would be the number displayed if you'd stick the engine to a scale and fire it. This might seem a little odd because I should actually multiply the rocket weight with 10 or 9.81 meters per second per second for that matter which is the gravity acceleration. The gravity acceleration is the speed something gains per second in free fall. This would lead me to the force of the mass of the rocket. Instead of doing this however, I simply divide the engine thrust by 10 which is practically the same and simpler for me because the engine thrust doesn't change so I can memorize it and don't have to calculate it each time. So the swivel can push 17 tons which I have written down because I haven't actually memorized it. Long story short, this means my rocket shall not be heavier than 17 tons or I would not be able to lift it up. There is still some room left, 13.8 tons, that looks good. I need a little spare thrust to push the rocket up else it will simply hover. Now I can launch it like this already and well let's just do it. And lift off. Just to make sure everyone knows it, rockets don't just fly straight upwards although it appears like it when you watch some launch live streams for example. Shortly after liftoff they begin with a so called pitch program which means they tilt sidewards in the direction of the orbit they want to achieve. Like this they gain some speed relative to the surface right from the start which is necessary to get enough speed for a stable orbit as you can see here. Now there are many different ways to achieve that but probably even more to fail. If you turn too quickly you will never leave the atmosphere and plummet back to ground. 
If you turn too slowly, you waste a lot of fuel burning upwards and may run out of it too early. I think it's best to find that one out for yourself, but I won't hide how I do it. At high speeds, the new aerodynamics really show their true colors. Everything gets weird when you're supersonic and it also happens to me that I flip it after hundreds of hours played, so I can imagine how frustrating that must be for new players. However, there is a pretty easy fix for that. Real rockets have to face the same challenges, but they also have a very powerful guidance system, which keeps them pointing in the right direction. All the rockets without or more basic ones used simply fins and the Soyuz rocket for example still does. What the fins basically do is to push the bottom or the back of the rocket in the opposite direction I am rotating, relative to the wind. Without these there is nothing which would stop my rotation other than me steering against it. Now it's also important to put these at the bottom because up front they would basically just flip my rocket around as shown here. Now the same thing with fins. I can try what I want but I can't flip it. The fins generate more counter force than my swivel engine can produce. Just releasing the controls brings the rocket in the correct heading, all by itself. It goes even so far I can completely stop steering it and let the rocket do its thing. This is called a gravity turn. Gravity pulls the nose down all by itself. As soon as my apoapsis, which is the highest point of my orbit, leaves the atmosphere at 70 km, I cut the engines off to coast there to then give it the last push to orbit. Well, it looks like this is a so-called single stage to orbit rocket. This means I didn't have to stage empty fuel tanks away in the order to get lighter on the way up like all real rockets do. Now the final part is to return and ideally land near the space center again. This is quite a lottery because it is different for every craft you re-enter. I typically start my re-entry burn over the desert just before the space center's peninsula. You can put a flag at the KSC in case you have trouble finding the exact location by the way. Now the burn and I focus Kerbin by double clicking on it to have a better view. I let my orbit touch the ground roughly between the small island here and the next peninsula. To get the focus back to my ship I press backspace. Let's now hope for the best. Oh and I should not forget to stage my booster away. This will give my capsule a boost due to the decoupling force, so I just point my capsule up which has the lowest impact on my trajectory. Ok, what the capsule now does is compressing the air in front of it. It's so fast the air can't escape and compressed air gets hot, really hot. The pod even gets surrounded by a plasma, which is by the way impossible to penetrate for radio waves, so the crew inside would be all by itself during re-entry in reality. This doesn't look too bad I'd say, not quite at the space center but that should do it. That's basically all it takes to reach orbit and even return. Once in space you can do all sorts of crazy things, as long as you take enough fuel with you. As a little bonus, I want to mention the so called scaling. In KSP everything scales up perfectly. Take my rocket for example, the payload it can carry to orbit is 1 ton and it even has some spare fuel left. If I wanted to lift almost 5 tons like this, all I had to do is to add 4 more boosters of the same kind to the sides. This must work because the amount it can lift scales with the rocket, unlike in reality where it can differ. Let me prove it. And launch. Nothing really changes except our payload being more heavy. I pretty much fly the same arc to space and my rocket is again a single stage to orbit craft, but this time has even more spare fuel left. Well, I said you can do crazy things once in space, so why not simply keep burning and head for the moon? This wasn't even planned, but raising my apoapsis just in front of the moon leaves me with an encounter. Double clicking it, I can exactly see how my flyby will look like. Now, just to make sure I don't run out of battery while falling to the moon, I shut them down and time warp. In reality, this would be called hibernation, but it would be very unhealthy for the crew, I think. As quick as that I'm at the moon and can break myself down until I get to a full stop relative to the surface. That's it, I now plummet to the ground and just have to make sure I don't hit the surface too quickly. And landing confirmed. Ok, that's it for this video and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.